Welcome to the Checkpoint Jumpstart Training. How to deploy a CloudGuard network security and threat prevention product lab. Exercise 5. Connecting the CloudGuard controller. In the previous exercise, we deployed a web server in the web network. We created a route table and we added three routes. We then created a firewall policy and that rule base to be able to access the web server. In this fifth and final exercise, we're going to activate the Cloud Guard controller on the management station. Once we have activated the Cloud Guard controller, we are going to import the Azure Cloud resources into the management station so that we can then use the cloud resources, the cloud identities, and the firewall rule base. Let me show you how. Let's get started. Open the Smart Console. Go to the Object menu. Select a new host. Let's call this host localhost. It's going to represent the management station. We're going to use the IP address of the loopback which is 127.0.0.1. Select OK. Now let's go and select the gateway object of CGI GW, the firewall cloud guard object. Here we want to enable the identity awareness blade, which the firewall will use to get the identities from the management station. So let's select this option the deployment wizard will pop up. I really don't want the wizard, but we need to select something to get past this wizard. So let's select something. Let's select the terminal server and uncheck the 80 query option. Select next. Select, I don't want to configure Active Directory. Select next. Now let's finish. The reason I went through the wizard is to get the Identity Awareness tab. So let's select it. As I mentioned, I really did not need the terminal server. I only selected it to get past the wizard. So now let's uncheck it. What I really wanted to enable was the Identity Web API, but it was not an option during the wizard. So let's select it now. We also need to configure some setting parameters. So select settings, select the green icon to add a client. Now let's select the localhost object that we just created. Select OK and select OK again. Say yes to accept the URL change. Again, select yes. You want to keep the change that multiple objects have the same IP address. Now let's install the policy, then publish and install. It's publishing the changes to the management station. Now let's install the policy to the firewall. Let's view the details. Now it's installing the new policy to the firewall. This new policy will turn on the identity awareness process on the gateway. We're almost there. Policy push is complete. Let's close this. The identity awareness process is now set up and ready to get the cloud identities from the management station using the identity awareness API. The controller process that is running on the management station will get its identities from the Azure cloud using the Cloud APIs. Remember, we turned on the Cloud Guard controller on a management station in Lab 2. But we never really configured the controller. So how does the management station get the identities from the Azure Cloud? Well, that's what the management controller process will do. The controller process will get the identities from the Azure Cloud using Azure APIs. 
Then the controller on the management station will feed this information to the firewall using Identity Awareness APIs. So next, I'm going to show you how to configure the controller to communicate to the Azure Cloud and get the cloud identities using cloud APIs. We need to create a new object, a very special object. Select New, More, select Server, select Data Center. The Data Center object is a very special object that we use with CloudGuard. You can see all the different cloud versions that we support, both for the public and private clouds. In this case, let's select the Microsoft Azure Data Center object. When we click on it, we get the new Microsoft Azure object. We need to fill in the details. Let's name this object the Azure-DC. Now, there are two ways to authenticate this controller object to the Azure Cloud using either the Service Principal Authentication or using the Azure Active Directory User Authentication. You can use the Service Principal if you have the information from your cloud provider. But for me, I'm going to use the username and password. Let's fill in all the details. Once all the correct details are completed, select Test Connection, and it works perfectly. We have a solid communication connection from the controller running on a management station to the Azure Cloud. Let's publish this change. This will save it in the database. Changes are being saved. Okay, now let's verify if we can now see the Azure Cloud objects in the rule base. Go to the Security and Policy tab. We're going to test this using a rule. Let's add a rule. Select Add Rule above icon. Let's call this rule Web Outbound. Select Source. Select Import. Select Data Centers. Select the Azure-DC, which is the Azure Data Center object that we just created and we just authenticated. Perfect. We can now see the cloud resource objects. Look, here is the backend subnet object that we created in the Azure Cloud in Exercise 1. And here is the front-end subnet object that we also created in Exercise 1. Here is the Cloud Guard Management Station object, CPMNG. Also, we see the CGI Gateway object, which is the Cloud Guard Gateway. You can search all the cloud resources in a few ways. You can search by network subscriptions, in case you have other Azure accounts or subscriptions. You can search the cloud resources by network security groups. Look, here you can even search by tags. Remember I said when we created the cloud resources that we could add tags if we wanted to. Well, if you had added tags, you can search the tag name here. Let's go to the virtual machines. Here is the web virtual machine that we created in exercise four. Let's select it. Let's change now the action to accept and the tracking to log. Also, I want to enable outbound NAT. So let's select the gateway object, the CGI GW. Let's go to the NAT tab and we select hide internal networks behind the gateway's external IP address. This NAT's all internal IP addresses is a very handy and a simple way to do NATing. Select OK. Yes, again, to confirm the warning. Let's push this policy. Publish and install. Every time you make a change, 
you have to publish before you can install. Now let's complete the install, view the details. The details view gives you a good view of status and any errors, if any. Good. Policy is installed. Close this dialog box. Now I want to test this rule that we just created. Let's go back to the Azure cloud. I want to select the web virtual machine. Let's open a serial console on the web virtual machine. It takes a few seconds to get console access. Let's log in with our username and password. Now let's ping Google. Ping 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. We can get ICMP echo replies. Great, we're able to ping Google from the web server. This means that both our firewall rules and NAT rules and also our routing tables are working as expected. Now let's exit this. Let's go back to the logs. Let's look for ICMP packets to Google. Let's use a filter. The source will be the web server 10.0.2.4. There is a lot of traffic. I'm searching for the destination of Google and service of ICMP. Here is one. Let's click on it. Notice the source is my web 10.0.2.4 and the destination is 8.8.8.8. That's Google's IP. On the NAT side, XLATE is the CGI GW external IP of 10.0.0.5. That's the gateway external IP on the front end subnet. Now let's close this log. And now that brings us to the end of this exercise. Before exiting, let's recap once again what we did in this lab. In this lab, we configured the controller. We first enabled Identity Awareness Blade on the gateway. We used the Identity Awareness Web API Identity Method. We created a Cloud Guard Data Center object. We authenticated the Data Center object to the Azure Cloud. Then we verified that the connection was successful. We created a rule in order to test the Azure Cloud Guard Data Center Connector object. In a source of the rule, we were able to retrieve the Azure Cloud resources. We added the web virtual machine as a source and to go to any destination over any service. We pushed the policy, then we test it by pinging Google from the web server. That brings us to the completion of exercise five. This not only ends this exercise, but also ends this lab. I sincerely hope that you found this information useful in understanding the CloudGuard network security and threat prevention product. I hope to see you again in future Checkpoint Jumpstart training videos. Until then, bye for now.